For the last two videos, we used only two records in our currency exercise file. Now let's add two more records and perform the same exception exercise we did in the last video. I'll open the currency exercise file and also the copy of the currency exercise file we have. Then copy two items and paste it into the currency exercise file. I'll add the serial numbers three and four. I'll then save and close the file. Then I'll go to the process studio and click go. It reaches the breakpoint. I'll click go again so that it completes the first item successfully and updates the output collection. I'll click go again so that it will complete the second item also successfully. Now we will navigate away to a different page so that the third item becomes an exception. And if I click go, you can see it took the exception path. Now let's bring the page back to the original page. Then click go. The item was processed successfully and if you check the output collection, you can see only three items which are the first, second and the fourth items. The third item is missing. The reason is when an item gets completed successfully, the currency converter stage will write the INR value into the queue data collections INR column and then the queue data collection is appended to the output collection. However, if an exception occurs for an item and when it takes this exception path, Neither the INR value in the queue data collection is updated nor the queue data collection is appended to the output collection. So we can replace this anchor stage with the append collection stage. This way the queue data collection will be appended to the output collection no matter if it is completed or exception. The only difference is that when it takes the completed path the INR field of the queue data collection will have the INR value. However, when it takes the exception path, the INR field of the queue data collection will be blank. Okay, now let's say when an item goes into an exception, we don't want to mark that as an exception and ignore it. Instead, we want the process to try again for the same item two more times. We can accomplish this using the maximum attempts option in work queues. Let me show you how to configure this. First, we will reset this process. Then go to system, click work queues and select currency queue. Here you can see the maximum attempts is set to 1 by default. If we increase this count, the number of attempts for exception items will increase. The way this works is if an item is marked as exception, Blue Prism will create a clone of the same item and insert it into the queue as a pending item. Let's see how this works. I'll set the maximum attempts to 3 and then click apply. First we will go to the control room, refresh and we will clear this queue. Then go to the process studio and just like the last time we will let the first two items to complete successfully and interrupt the third item so it goes into exception. I'll click go and it reached the breakpoint. Now if you go to the control room, refresh, you can see that four items are added to the queue. Click go again. It completed the first item. And I'll click go again. And the second item is also completed. Now I will navigate the page to a different page. And click go. Okay, so it took the exception path and if you go to the control room and refresh, you can see that the item with the item key 3 is marked as exception. You can also see that Blue Prism has cloned this item and set it as pending and under the attempt column it shows the number of the attempt. Now I will navigate the page back to the original page. Go back to the process. I'll remove the breakpoint and click go.
All right, the process is completed. I will reset the process. And if I go to the control room, refresh, you can see that there are no more pending items and also the second attempt of item number three is completed. Now we can always override this maximum number of attempts and have the bot to do only one attempt. If you double click the mark exception stage, you can see there is an input called retry which is a flag type. If you set it to true, then Blue Prism will retry the exception item depending on the number of attempts we have set in the queue. However, if you set it to false, then there will not be any additional attempts. Now if I open the Excel file, you can see that there is an additional entry for the item number 3. And it is not sorted in the right order. Yes, this is pretty obvious because if you look at our process diagram, irrespective of whether the item is marked completed or exception, the queue data collection is appended to the output collection which in turn is written to this Excel file. So for every attempt it makes, there will be an entry. Now there are a number of ways to solve this problem. I'll give you one easy solution and you are free to try your own logic or solution and if it works, please feel free to comment below this video. So what I'll do is, right after this mark exception stage and before the append collection stage, I will set a decision stage to check if the attempt number of that particular item is equal to 3. If it is equal to 3, then I will connect it to the append collection stage and if it is not equal to 3, then I will connect it to the get next item stage. This way it doesn't update the collection for every single attempt, instead it will update only for the last attempt which is the third attempt in this case. After that, when all the items are completed, right before the update excel stage, I'll set another action item to sort the collection by the serial number column. So if you drag and drop an action stage, double click, select utility collection manipulation. You can see there is an action called sort collection and if you select that you can mention the collection name, the sort field and if it should be ascending or descending. So once the sorting is done you can write it to the excel file. Okay so I said we have to check if the attempt number of that particular item is equal to 3 but how do we get the attempt number? Well, if you simply double click the get next item and check the outputs tab, you can see that it returns an output called attempts which is basically the attempt number. You can simply create another data item for this and use it in the decision. Alright, so that is how you get the number of the attempt. That being said, you can try this logic or you can come with your own logic and if you find any other logic, it can be easier or more complex, doesn't matter. Just go ahead and comment below in this video. Okay, so in the next video, I will introduce you to multi-bot architecture.